here at the Dyke March, and I'm with Leanne Iskander, who is the honored Dyke this year. And uh, right now, uh, Leanne is in the midst of a fight for GSAs in all schools in Ontario. Currently, they are frowned upon in the Catholic School Board. Well, if it's not called a GSA or anything that's recognizable for what it is, then no one knows the support is there. So it needs to be, it needs to be called like something that people would know what it is. Everyone deserves to have a support group. I mean, everyone needs support, so it's a good idea. I'm not asking for your prayers. I know, but I'm praying for you. What I am asking for is equal rights for, for gay and lesbian students. I believe in God, and because I believe in God, I believe that we're held to morality. Well, why does that have to be in conflict with human rights? Because human rights aren't about doing whatever you want. But, no, no, hold on a second. I, I'm not... I'm I, praying for you every day. This is just one more aggressive agenda by the homosexual community. Can you yourself, can you yourself, please? These clubs are wrong for Catholic schools. Madam Chair, this is a, a policy matter. Your policy should clearly state that GSAs are not right for us. The protection of denominational aspects of Catholic schools is absolute. That's not my wording, that's the Supreme Court of Canada. You listen to the concerns of parents, teachers, tr trustees, and clergy, and I would hope that we, as students who will be directly affected by the decisions made by the board on this issue, will also have a say in the decision-making process. For guidance on how to support queer and trans students, you need to look no further than us, your queer and trans students. It is my understanding that a small but outspoken group of people have spoken out against gay straight alliances in Catholic schools, and I realize that this, that this places the board in a difficult situation. So I, so I want to tell you that no matter what some outspoken parents or religious groups might say, a gay straight alliance is a good thing to have in the school. I would rather send my child to a public school than a, a Catholic that betrays God. Some moments where you really have to have a head scratch. Like uh, one of the speakers actually implied that she felt that her Catholicism was marginalized because she couldn't speak out against queer lifestyles. They, they claim that they don't support our lifestyle, which seems foolish to even call it that. The issue is about uh, lifestyle choices that are either congruent or not congruent with Catholic teaching. Extra had a very difficult time getting comment after, uh, after the meeting wrapped up tonight. Many Catholic parents refused to speak to us simply because we were the gay and lesbian news. They were told by many other people to, uh, to not talk to us. And it's from that TV station called Extra. Make that nuisance of yourself, an exhibition of ourselves. What kind of people these are? That's what they expect in our school, that they expect our children to become like them. Who are you from? I'm what? from Extra. Let's, I have a very early fight. So. Tonight at the Toronto Catholic District School Board, amendments were passed that essentially put denominational rights ahead of human rights. Queer students were not only blocked from speaking from the very beginning, but there was an abundance of Catholic parents who attempted successfully to silence their voices. Hello, I'm Andrea Houston with Extra, and we are sitting down with Leanne Skander, who has been leading a Gay Straight Alliance at her school, and we have made the Gay Straight Alliance movement uh, our newsmaker of the year. And rightly so, no other story has spilled more ink on the pages of Extra all year. Um, so Leanne, congratulations for all your work and, uh, and making GSA so prominent, such an important issue. Um, how do you feel about this? Uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's great that there's been so much attention on the issue and like, um, the issues like facing queer students in Catholic schools. You know, maybe take me back to the beginning, you know, and, and where we've come, you know, how does, uh, that must have been pretty scary to take on your school and the school board and, uh, and the Catholic church. Yeah, um, well, it's been how much, I think it was six months almost now. Remember when they first started meeting before we could even have a group, before it was even a general equity group, we had nothing. I remember the first meeting going in, uh, being too shy to even talk. You were also marching in pride this yeah. year. Um, how did that feel? I, I think it's awesome. It felt good. It felt like, I mean, coming from a place where I don't always feel like uh, I'm able to be myself. It's nice to be surrounded by million, a million people who just make me feel like it's okay to be who I am. Which is essentially the point of a GSA, yeah. it's, just, it's just to be yourself. Well, like when I first wanted to propose a GSA, like I've talked to a few of my teachers and they thought that would be fine, they didn't see any issue with it. But when we actually went to the principal, um, they just like they said no, and like they didn't offer us any alternative at that point. Like they didn't offer us a general equity group or anything. So it was really disappointing because we already had like a whole bunch of people who were interested in the group, and it was like it was just really upsetting. 
I think most of the bullying that I heard of happened like actually like after we proposed to GSA and it got denied because of all the attention on the issue. Right. But before yeah. that, we I just thought we needed it because there was never like a voice for queer students in our school. There was never, our school never did any anti-homophobia like anti-bullying initiatives, um, and like it was never really discussed. To have, to force, especially Christian, uh, classrooms or schools, to have. Uh, homosexual clubs would of course be an affront to their family values and what does this have to do with bullying nothing we've definitely seen like um, less bullying now that we do have the group it's kind of difficult because our group isn't really that visible considering the name is so generic the board's inability to accept a group with the word gay in its name sends a message that the board cannot accept its gay students. We know that the Catholic school boards have actually said that gay straight alliances are not allowed. They're forbidden. Um, they've now allowed general equity groups in Catholic schools, but nothing specific to queer students, nothing specific to trans students. Um, they can't even use the word gay or rainbow. Um, What's you, what, what do you, are you going to plan to do about this? Are you going to enforce gay straight alliances in all schools? I've had a chance to get into some of our Catholic schools uh, last week and see firsthand uh, some of the great work that's being done by really progressive students, really progressive teachers to respond to the needs of students in those classrooms. Uh, I'm going to continue to do that work. I absolutely support uh, that we need to see uh, identified groups of support uh, in our schools and I'm going to listen to LGBT students to say, to have them tell me what, what they're looking for. Well, um um, at our first group meeting, our principal tried to get us get us or get our group to be a general equity group, and she asked students what name they thought would be a good name for a general equity group. So obviously they were all generic names, and one student suggested open arms, and they kind of stuck it to our group, and we still have to go with it, even though now our group is an LGBTQ specific group. It's a systemic problem, really, right? Because it's it really boils down to an issue of uh, rights and like human rights versus religious rights. Well, where's it going, right? We have a clash of rights. We have human rights um, versus religious rights, which go back to confederation. Yeah. So um, where's it going? I want to be optimistic, and I want, I want to believe that human rights are going to win out in the end. And we've seen quite a bit of changes at the provincial level over the past year. We had the announcement from um, MPP Glenn Murray back in June saying that LGBTQ groups will be mandated in all schools. That didn't really transpire. Um, and now we have new legislation at the provincial level. Every school where students request that this be put in place, that they be permitted to organize themselves uh, with a gay straight alliance, uh, it may not be that name that they use, Speaker, but the important thing is that we're going to have that, that kind of a supportive group there available in all our schools. Well, I think, I think it's great, but I think the main issue is that it's still the name, um, because it says that they could be called gay straight alliances or any other name, which would be fine if it was any other name as determined by students. But like now I see an opportunity for boards to like force us to have like a really generic name for a group, which kind of, it makes it difficult for a group to be visible in the school. Well, uh, assuming the, the bill passes, which um, may take a long time, we need to push, we can't wait for the bill to pass. We need to start, uh, we need to start doing things now. We need to start worrying about the name because they're still trying to push uh, against the name. They're trying to tell, tell us that who we are is not important, it's not necessary or too controversial. And I think that's wrong, and I think we should be allowed to be who we are in name and in person. Speaker, I was starting to feel a little bit positive, and then all of a sudden uh, got a little disappointed near the end there. Nearly two-thirds of LGBTQT students and their parents say that they feel unsafe in their school, Speaker. There have been at least three young people who have taken their own lives in the province of Ontario. It is heartbreaking, Speaker, but it is also completely unacceptable. Can we finally put the politics aside and answer a simple question? Will students who want a GSA club in their schools be allowed to put one together and have one in their school? Speaker, yes. The answer to that very simply is yes. In yes. fact, that wording is in the bill, Speaker. You know, are you going to reach out to outside of Ontario? Do you see that, you know, you must get a lot of kids, a lot of students reaching out to you at this point. You're, you know, your face is attached to the movement. Yeah, I think, I think we just really want to reach out to, like, other students in other schools, like, in our board or, like, other boards. Because, like, now it's mostly the schools in the GTA, but we'd like to go 
for more other schools in Ontario um, that are having trouble starting GSAs. What needs to happen now? That's a good question. I can't speak for the youth movement uh, on the issue and where they're going. I mean, it's clear that they're going forward and they're going to continue fighting for the right to have nothing less than what they want. And in a lot of cases, it seems to be they want a GSA and they want to be able to call it a GSA. And frankly, they should have a GSA.